Hello, hello! Uh, welcome to Behind the Streams on Streamer Square. I am Wes Sisa. Uh, you can just call me Wes. And my wonderful co host. Oh, it's not to the right this time. I'm used to my wonderful co host. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we've changed it up today. Um, hey, everyone. I'm Adorkable Me, also known as Rini. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, got a pretty cool show coming up. Wes will tell you all about it. Yeah, we are going to be going over mod tools today. So if you are a mod in a channel, you already know there are those basic ones like the icons that you can turn on. Uh, but we're going to explore way more than that today because... If you've been around modding, you kind of know that you're more than just a ban hammer. Um, obviously, we've talked about some other roles that you take in chat, and uh, these tools are going to be things that help you not just in the ban hammer role, which some of these will help you with, mm -hmm. uh, but also tools that you can use to make uh, the, the lives of you and your fellow mods a lot easier when you actually uh, maybe are off stream mm -hmm. or maybe it's just a chat client. So we're going to be covering tons of cool stuff today. Yep. And some of these things too are really great to learn because knowing these tools and having them kind of in your repertoire and your tool belt, um, they're just going to make you more valuable to your streamer, which is great because who doesn't love hearing you're the best mod, you're the one, like I can't get rid of you, like all that kind of high praise that we get from our streamer when, you know, we don't get a whole bunch of stuff all the time from our streamers which um sneak peek tune in next week for some really cool mod appreciation stuff that's um, gonna be a great show yeah but mod tools let's just dive straight in let's jump right into it um so with great power comes great responsibility we know this but we also know that like i said we're not just ban hammers um in fact banning is probably the least that I do in most of the channels that I, I mod for and have moderated for in the past. Um, it's, I mean, it, it's, like I said, it's probably the action that I take the very least. And I mean, you know, depending on where you are, sometimes not even daily. Yeah. It's one of those things where in most streams that I'm in, um, I don't have to. In some of the other ones, it's really nice for streamers to not have to worry about, like, anyone in chat like they don't actually have to use their mouse anywhere but in the game or wherever they're actually streaming um to have mods on top of that so sometimes yeah you will be the person who's just like we know these set rules this, these are the exact rules we're gonna take you out but that's not always the case um and we're actually uh we're looking at right now the basic uh twitch mod tools mm -hmm. uh Rini, did you want to talk about that yeah, so this is um, the menu item that all mods will see once you're moderated in a channel. Um, they'll have your own preferences, whether or not you want to turn on the mod icons, which we'll have a screenshot of um, here in a bit. Um, whether or not you want to show mod actions, which I think is really great because that tells you not only what you did, but what the other mods have done. So it's really helpful to know like, oh, so-and-so banned this person. So if you want to know why, you know who to talk to about it. Um, which is very important, especially when you're stepping into a new channel and mm -hmm. you're trying to get the feel for that channel and when you should take action. It's amazingly important to be able to be like, oh, hey, chef, why did you ban this person? Because I didn't think that was an offense. You can learn yeah. so much that way. Yeah. And then there's the different channel modes. Um, I also like think the deleted messages is important to have because... Um, We'll get into some of the extensions you can use even as a viewer to read deleted messages, but having them as a moderator and a streamer, it's very important to know what was actually being said. Um, if you're doing a no spoilers run, though, you probably want to keep deleted messages just gone. That way you're not accidentally reading, but just an everyday stream. You know, it's not a bad idea to kind of know what's going on and why someone was banned because we we do also have the streams where... We do meme bans and such. So yeah. you got to know whether or not your mod is actually like punishing someone for saying something bad or like intending to harm someone um, or whether they're just being silly, which I mean, we've all been there. We've all done it. I, I will say that I think that kind of goes both ways. Again, like I, like I said before, it's a great way to help learn a channel. And when you're new to a mod team, 
um, it, it's super helpful to be able to be see the deleted messages and be like, mm -hmm. oh, they were doing this, so it got immediately deleted. Okay, I guess we delete those messages. Uh, you know, if your streamer doesn't have like a hard and fast like rule guide for what gets deleted, a lot of that is just picked up on the job, your first, you know, days, yeah. weeks moderating. Um, I will say, though, there are some times when if you're just not having the best of days, I like to leave them deleted. If, um, if another mod catches it before me and I don't have to see some gross kid saying some awful crap to my streamer, sometimes I just, I'd rather not see it. <laughs> so yeah. that's all on you. But I will say it's a great way mm -hmm. to learn about the moderation of a channel. Yeah. Um, there's also great things here um, as far as having timestamps. I personally love timestamps because I don't think to look down at where my clock is on my computer or my laptop. And so having that right in chat means I can know what time it is um, without having to actually leave anywhere. And so that's been nice. Uh, the tasks are really cool. Um, the one that I'm really going to point out is the review request queue. If your streamer does anything with the channel points that requires some sort of action, um, like they redeem points for certain things that you need to be in charge of, like um, song requests or something, which, you know, legal issues of song requests aside, like um, that way you can actually pull links from there. You can see who's done things. And then once they're marked as completed, you can move them out of the queue. As you can see in the one that I have here, we don't really do that in the chats that I'm in, so there's over 99 missed things. Um, but yeah, so it's an interesting thing to actually deal with. Yeah, and for those uh, for those channel modes, we went over those pretty quickly. Emotes yeah. only, subscribers only, and followers only, and slow mode mm -hmm. should really only be enabled if your streamer asks for them or has given you a previous reason and told you when to activate those. Because those can be a big deal. Those aren't something to meme about. Um, that's definitely something that you want to make sure you're clear with your with your streamer before you do anything like changing the channel mode. Uh, because that's, uh, yeah, that's not a fun thing if they're not expecting mm -hmm. it. Um, I will say, though, it is good to kind of know what their limits are on some of these things. Um, sometimes you'll get a host happening um, or a raid happens and tons of people come in and maybe you do need to move it into slow mode for your streamer and they know that's what they want. Or you know from a previous person in the other stream or another mod talking to you saying, hey, you know, we have some unique people coming over who may try to spam or troll or whatever. So you can turn on um, the subs followers slow. There's also a, one that Twitch has now called unique messages. So people can't just spam the same thing over and over again. So it's really cool. It's not great for raids, though, because then it means no one can really use the raid message. So be careful how you're using that one. But feel free to use it if it is. I mm -hmm. mean, this is I want to say it's so rare, but it's not as rare as we'd like it to be. There are mm -hmm. straight up toxic raids where even the, the the very raid message is offensive. That's something you shouldn't have to ask your streamer about generally. If they're getting a truly toxic raid message, throw on that unique message mode, throw it into followers only. If it's really bad and they're following still, throw it into sub only mode. Make your streamer some money mm -hmm. if they're going to troll. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but those are, those are just really quick stop gaps. Those are like... Yeah. slamming the gates down on the dam and just saying like nope this stops right now so it's not great for mm -hmm. a chat uh but it is great to stop a, a big troll um, yeah and i didn't know unique messages was a thing until i was in a raid that moved over and the streamer already just had it on because of something that happened previously and so all of a sudden i'm like oh i can't use the raid message but you know it was fine because then it was like oh I have to now say hello to the streamer in my own way, which, you know, is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Makes it yeah. Uh, just so that your your intro has to be a little bit unique, which isn't the worst thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Are we ready for the next one? Yeah, getting into auto mod controls. Ooh, ooh. Wes's favorite. 
<laughs> Automod is so great. I love Automod. Um, but go ahead, take it away. Oh no, you can. I was gonna say a lot of people don't like Automod because it can be a little too aggressive. Um, but yeah, it's it can it can do some really good things, especially like if you have hard and set rules. Yeah. Um, I I mean it's it's definitely there are settings for it, so you can tell it um how. It kind of just like levels of, of risk of how bad the like because some words are always going to be caught by automod uh, if it's at all turned on and some of them you know you can say you can basically tell it like oh my chat allows f bombs um, so mm-hmm. you do have some choices in it on how strict you uh, you set it up um, so that being said it's obviously less useful in chats where the uh you know the the chat ranges from sexual to f bombs to all of that because it it is trained to catch more than just bad words Mm -hmm. it's it's trained to catch phrases and ideas like it's caught some amazing stuff before um and i i mean what i guess what would you suggest just go into your test channel and go and test out exactly what's blocked and what isn't because I don't think there's a, a hard and fast documentation on auto mod levels, but I could yeah. be wrong about that. Uh, I haven't seen too much on it, and I know like, the different levels are very. I'm I'm a big fan of just putting your blacklist words in yourself. Um, mm-hmm. That does mean you have to start thinking like a troll and be like, well, what kind of things do I not want said to me? But when if you have a good mod team, this is something you can kind of talk through with each other and just be like, hey, you know, we're gonna probably let loose the worst worst things we're ever going to say to each other and around each other, but we want to make sure that we actually um, can get things blocked and can make this a safe and inclusive area. Um, yeah, yeah. When we get to uh, BTTV, I want to talk more about that because that blacklist, mm-hmm. that, that one yeah. blacklist is so important for so many reasons, and honestly, I think one of the most important ones is mental health because it's just it is draining to look through those words or to try and think of those words i promise you it is just it is an awful experience to even try and think like what would the trolls do if they were trying to say the worst thing ever without getting caught and it's just it's not fun you want to have that list save it somewhere and just add to it you don't want to have to go back through it and mess with it just Mm -hmm. save it somewhere and plug it in (laughs) yeah Um, i will say like it does kind of get hard because of how user names are. Um, I know in Locos community, there's someone who gets auto modded repeatedly whenever you mention their name because of a word that's in there. And so that's something you have to think about every so often. Yeah. Yeah. And auto mod doesn't learn that fast. Uh, no. We've had that user for a long time and auto mod still every day <laughs> every day they come in and we've got to approve you know five or six hellos and uh but you know honestly for the stuff that auto mods caught i will take that every single mm-hmm. day and will happily approve because auto mod one of the great things about uh auto mod and using it as a moderator tool is that you also learn auto mod as it like learns so you like when that user comes into chat and says hello there's, you know, four of us sitting there waiting to click allow because we know that we, we know what's coming up and we know that it's OK. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's yeah. I mean, honestly, I, again, I, Automod is one of my favorite tools personally. Yeah. And this is one of those things that like test out Automod, test out the extensions, test out your bots, because some of these things like blocking hyperlinks and whatnot. Yeah, you can do it with the Twitch tools or you can do it with your bot. Just depends on how you want to have it implemented. Yeah, and um, uh, we kind of went into bots, and we didn't go into this, but just real briefly, there is a way on some bots to whitelist certain domains. So you can mm-hmm. whitelist twitch.clips or twitch.tv slash clips, and then people can only post clips in your channel, mm-hmm. uh, but they can't post you know a link to a YouTube video or a live leak video or something crazy like that. Yeah, not all bots have that, unfortunately, but there are some where you can whitelist it. Um, and one of the last things we'll point on here is um, the email verification. This is really good for when you have communities that you do want to protect. This means that people who have their email verified for their account, they are the only ones who can chat in your um, in your chat. And so for some communities, you will want this. For others, that might be a little bit of overkill. But it is a good thing to know, especially like 
if you're finding that your streamer is having communities being overrun um, and they just need to kind of step up the level of protection that they have. Yeah, definitely a good thing that you can turn on temporarily as well. Mm -hmm. Again, if you if you have that back to back troll three days in a row that keeps on making new accounts, you know, it, it at the very least, it makes it a little bit tougher for them, uh, which yeah. is, you know, a lot of times the best we can do with trolls because um, it's not hard to, you know, remake mm -hmm. accounts. We all know this. Um, which leads but, us into our next slide really well, because how do you know, like, what's going on with each user and whatnot? Twitch has implemented one where you can just click on someone's name. There's a bunch of information you can get now. It tells you the account age. It tells you how long they've followed. Um, it allows you to do all sorts of ban, timeout, purge. Um, I'm not actually sure because I've had BTTV for so long whether or not the um, timeout time limits, like the for one hour, 24 hours, whatever, if that's actually native to Twitch anymore, or if this is something that BTTV adds to this. Um, the other great thing is if you click on messages, it shows just their messages from chat. So that way, if you need to kind of like be, this is why I'm banning this person, you can pull out those specific ones without having to scroll through a lot. You can see how many times they've been timed out or banned. And mods get to add comments, and the comments can be read by anyone who is a mod and the streamer. This is an underused feature. Use this more, moderators, please. Mm -hmm. Put in those mod comments. It helps so much. I think slash user is like the most amazing tool that, that Twitch has given mods in a long time. Um, and mm -hmm. I think mod comments is the most underrated, um, <clears throat> especially like in Loco's chat. We have a lot of people who have uh dozens upon dozens of timeouts and t dozens of bans all for the memes um and if there are no mod comments then you know obviously we look at it and we're like oh okay yeah no but then we mm -hmm. also have i mean mod comments can get down to <clears throat> uh being able to this gets a little touchy but describe someone's personality and say you know hey let's you know this person had an argument about this let's not do this <clears throat> like yeah. it sounds very personal but a lot of times that's what mod comments are for only mods can see them mods in the streamer mm -hmm. um they are shared among the moderators so it's not like only i can see my comments mm -hmm. if if i'm if one of my co co mods puts a comment on there i can see it too um and yeah i just i can't i can't speak enough to how great those are yeah um yeah. especially for like one time timeouts you know mm -hmm. you've got a, a user who's been around for six months but comes around in a weird mood one day and you know gets timed out for saying some edgy stuff um you know you can put that in the comments and just say you know had a bad day t this is why i mm -hmm. timed out stuff like that is super yeah. helpful super yeah. super helpful you can put notes in there like this person is prone to spoiling this game you can put things like uh this person doesn't really understand cultural cues from the streamer's culture or is it a native language speaker to the streamer so that way yes. like you know that they're trying this person wants to be part of the community but it, they're having a few difficulties that aren't necessarily their own um but they are trying they have good intentions and it helps, especially with new mods, to know, oh, maybe I shouldn't just outright ban this person. I mean, sometimes you do need to, like, stop and be like, hey, you know, what you said was completely not okay. But this gives you the background of knowing what's gone on with that user each and every time. And, and the beautiful thing is, so many of us are already pulling this menu up this menu up when we <laughs> when we go to potentially ban someone because you know there's one weird comment or one like potentially edgy comment and you're like wait let me see if this is what they say or if this is just like a one-off you click on it and you see mm -hmm. mod comments right there so if you see something potentially edgy and maybe you decide not to time out you can still put a mod comment in that says potentially edgy comment maybe look like racism and then if there's two of those comments then the third time someone goes to look they're going to click on mod comments and go like yeah this is a pattern we, we, this is an issue um so please more mod comments mm -hmm. i love it i love it yeah 
I will say that one of the things that like people have been wanting though is how can we make this go beyond just the channel that we're in? Um, can we make it team specific? Can we share this with other people? That's something that streamers have said they wanted. And I know, I think as mods, it would be nice too, especially during raids. Like if you are a mod in a stream and you are raiding another stream, um, reach out to their mods and say, hey, we've had this problematic person. This is why, you know, we just want to give you a heads up. I mean, some mods might be like, "Ick, I don't care. But honestly, I think you're doing them a benefit of just saying, hey, you know, I want to protect your community too. We value your community and we're coming over here with our people, good or bad. And, you know, you should know what's going on too. And I personally, I don't think I've ever had a mod complain. If I reached out to say, hey, we've had this troll following us all day, just a heads up, their username is this or that or this. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've never had a, a, a mod say like, screw off, I don't care. Like, yeah. they, they might say thank you and move on and they really don't care, but nobody's mad at you for it. Um, it's a, it's a you yeah. know, it's a good gesture. Us, us mods got to stick together, right? Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. So um, that's a lot about that menu um but it's super useful oh my gosh oh so um, i'm realizing as i created these things i clicked on some of the wrong uh text tools and so sorry that some of the text is changing from white text to white highlight text it's just oh <laughs> we did this we did some edits quickly to make it dark mode um i, yeah, I complained just... about light mode in like at like 442 <laughs> that was my so bad fixed... that was my bad yeah but it's fine. Like, um, this is just to give a quick um, example of what the mod icons look like for anyone who's never seen them. It goes from um, banning a person, which is like full outright ban of the channel, to timing out for 10 minutes, to purging or deleting. So it just deletes it, and that's all it does. Um, I love the delete key. I think it is great. Uh, I use this a lot, especially if I don't know if I want to ban someone. I just delete the message and then talk about it later because i'd rather delete yeah. first ask questions later rather than ban first yeah i actually this just came up the other day um and i you know what it was actually carly that i disagreed with carly <laughs> said that the mod icons were fantastic and i agree but i don't think they're for everyone either i am so prone to misclicks that I can't do it. I, I refuse to take the risk because if I have the mod icons on, sometimes I'll be like watching a YouTube video on this screen and then I'll like accidentally click my mouse and notice that it's like on this screen over here and I'm like, oh crap, mm -hmm. crap what did I just click on? Um, so like it, it does give people an edge. People can like Carly can fire off a ban or a delete much faster than I can usually. Uh, but I also don't accidentally delete or ban. So I say to anyone who is a moderator to try them out. Um, mm. If you're like me and you're prone to misclicks, probably avoid it because uh, your your fellow mods are going to get annoyed <laughs> if you're constantly accidentally deleting messages and stuff. Um, but uh, also, I mean, if you're if you are in a channel. It, like there's some channels that I mod for that get like a hundred viewers and it's a card game. So maybe the chat isn't moving very fast. Mod tools there are fantastic mm -hmm. or mod icons. there are fantastic. Like I'm not worried about it one bit yeah. usually because I can just put chat over on the side, not, not ignore it. But when I need to pop in and do something real quick, it's still right there. Yeah. Um, and one of the ones we didn't put up here, um, that's very similar to these. If you right click a person's name as a mod, Something that I do too often because I'm used to just right clicking things. It brings up this slider bar that at the top has ban and at the bottom has purge. And as you go up the slider, it's the length of their ban. And so um, I've accidentally done this a lot. If you just go and click off somewhere else, it doesn't do anything. Um, but I've accidentally like given people really weird timeouts. Like my streamers just like, why did so and so get timed out for like 562 seconds? I'm like, which you can't actually do 562, I don't think, but um, it's just, it's weird. It's something you have to get used to. I do actually use it for some things just because I, it's, but I think I can use it more when I'm memeing with someone because for me, I'd rather give them a really weird timeout than just a regular one. So 
that one not for 73 for seconds, you know? Yeah. Like one of those things like, oh, I'm just going to give you a minute. So I'm just going to do that real quick to you. And yeah. maybe you'll get a minute. Maybe you'll get two. It's a lottery. <laughs> well, I will say too, um, one of the important things that we kind of brought up here, but it well, kind of on a t somewhat related uh, is the ability to delete a message and then mm -hmm. go back and take further action. Um, yeah. When you right click someone in chat and do that slider and go down to delete, it's just a purge. It just deletes mm -hmm. their messages in chat. It doesn't, they can talk the second after you do that. But if it's like, obviously, if it's someone spamming over and over and over, you need to actually slide up and do a timeout. But if there's a one off message that you're not even sure about or something, you can always just delete the message and ask questions later, which a lot of times is a good way to go. Don't get too trigger happy, obviously. And it very much depends on your community, your streamer, uh, the game you're playing, all kinds of things on, on how... Uh, generous you should be with the mm -hmm. uh with the timeouts uh but obviously read the room try and figure out what you're what you're what you're dealing with uh but always just don't be afraid to delete a message first and then check with mm -hmm. the other mods uh always better safe than sorry yeah. you can always apologize to someone I yeah and as soon mind. as you use any of those mod icons the ban one turns into a check mark and that is an unban and so you do have the option with the icons to unban and you can do it right from there. Um, actually, because we already touched on this, and I did not bring this no. up, Carly brings up a really good point. When you get an auto-modded uh, message, it does not show up in that user's log. Mm. So that can be very important. That's another great reason to add a mod note, because if you de deny a message through auto-mod, it never makes it to chat. Therefore, it never makes it in that person's history. This makes it tough to report because you have to take a screenshot of the message before it gets denied, or you need to have another type of client that's tracking auto mod options or auto mod actions, I should say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's, this a, seems that's like a very good point. That like you need to have some sort of screen clipping tool um, that is hot keyed for your computer if you're using PC. Um, if you're using Mac, it's actually super easy to make screenshots really fast and have them just be targeted. <laughs> I'm kidding, Mac is fine. I've got, yeah. I, I'm fine. I'm... <laughs> yeah. um, so having those, that way you can save things um, or, you know, just make some sort of history of like knowing who's gonna, if you have a big robust mod team, Who's going to be the one who's really going to catch these more often? That way you can copy paste it, make sure someone gets them. Um, yeah. Uh, in the next slide, though, is a lot of the stuff that some we already kind of brought up in chat, which is the slash user. And I'm going to let Wes take off on this because I actually haven't used the slash anything that often because I tend to not trust my typing speed versus my mouse speed. Okay. Um, yeah, the only reason I really wanted to bring these things up is because there are a lot of people like I am a faster typist than I am like finding someone in chat and properly clicking their name. I, I know it sounds <laughs> dumb, but I, I would I'm honestly so much happier mm -hmm. typing slash user. Um, so if you're in a channel and you moderate, you just want to go in and like you see in the screenshot here, just type slash and scroll through all of the commands that you can actually use in that channel. Uh, if you're mm -hmm. like me, it's super helpful. I don't use it for everything. Like I never do slow mode through the chat, right? I suppose I could, uh, but I just, I, I never really think to. Yeah. Um, what are some other good ones? I think uh, slash timestamp is nice, right? Yeah, um, um, I actually use um, the emo only through this, However, I will say I always forget how to turn emo only off. So make sure you know how to turn things off if you're going to turn them on. Because uh, there's definitely times when I'm just like, I don't know how to fix it. Another mod has to get it. Um, um, but yeah, um, I do want to point out one in the very middle that is really cool. It's a mod tool, not for banning. It's a, not a ban hammer tool at all. It's super cool. Just got put in, and they just made upgra upgrades to it so mobile users can actually participate better. And it's the poll. So we're so used to using straw poll a lot for this, but 
Twitch actually made their own polling one. And it's one where you can just, I've never opened a poll. In fact, I'm going to, um, I'm going to try one right now. Open a poll that says, have you ever opened a poll? Yeah. <laughs> um, and Jabber, yeah, it is kind of like you, uh, like you said, Greenshot is uh, something that you could use to capture screenshots, uh, like we were talking about just a moment before. Um, basically, when I press print screen, it brings up a pointer where I can drag and drop. Um, and then I select that area. It, and then once I select that area of screen, it gives me like 20 options. Like, do I want to open this in paint? Do I want to save it? Do I want to upload it to Imager? Um, it's a really cool program. I suggest everybody have that or Giazzo for just for the sake of like reporting, if nothing else. Um, um, I love all of you so much. Um, as you can see, the poll is going live. I was able to set up as soon as I type slash poll, I just hit enter. It brought up a screen where I was able to put in the poll question, what my options were, whether or not I wanted to allow um, voting for bits, whether or not I wanted subscriber votes to count for uh, two times. Um, one of the neat things is you can now actually click through this with mobile. Otherwise you would have had to go slash vote and then the number, which they don't tell you the number on the options. So you kind of have to like just count down. Um, hmm. You get to set the time limit. You get to set how many bits you can do this for. And as you can see with 10 votes, uh, do you like polls? The winner is spoon. <laughs> great. great. <laughs> yeah, um, it was, you can do silly things, but this is really great um, to have for like choosing games, uh, choosing what's going to be like the room color lights if you're doing it that way. And the fact that you can have it set for one minute up to, I don't know how many minutes is max, but like, it's kind of nice that you can actually have this and you don't have to allow extra voting for bits, but you know, it's kind of cool when someone goes in and just, I'm going to drop a lot of bits because I want this until, you know, your streamer is going to get money for that. Yeah. Um, um, so basically check out your, your slash actions. There, there are some mm -hmm. good stuff uh, in there that you can make some, some good use out of. Um, and if you're like me and you'd prefer to type, uh, sometimes it's uh, an easier way to do it rather than misclicking is what yeah. the problem is. <laughs> and you can also see your requests in there as well. So that's always a nice thing too. Um, which, yeah, misclicks. I mean, that's basically what the, the next one is. Like, you know, Twitch tools that are not perfect. We've been asking for certain things, um, which we definitely want to hear from you guys, either here in chat tonight or on our Twitter, on our Discord. Um, we want to know what mod tools you are using the most. And also we want to know what do you want from mod tools? Like, what do you want to see built into Twitch? What do you want to see in a bot? Um, what are things that you think are underutilized and we should really be like going through? Cause uh, mods are really the lifeblood of Twitch. And so we need to help each other. And so that's, I mean, that's why we have our show is because Wes and I are super, super passionate, not just about Twitch, but about our communities. And so we're here to help others become the best mods that they can. And really just to be able to help the people within their communities. Because that's how communities grow, is helping each other from the inside out. Yeah. Yeah, better reporting services would definitely be a big help. Um, but... We're going to click into Better T Switch TV. Wes, you're still muted. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Sorry. I was trying to <laughs> pull something up in, uh, in regards to that auto mod thing. Uh, but mm. we will get to that. Um, yeah. So, Better so, Twitch TV. Yeah. Here you can see, um, again, another live view of what it looks like when you just right click click someone's name um or not right click when you left click someone's name sorry i'm i'm so used to right clicking it's you left click someone's name this window comes up uh if this is an amazing user her name is susan we love her to death it tells us when her account was created how long she's been following the stream how long she's been a sub um kind of gives us some general things about her messages mod comments bans you know she doesn't have any of those the one I really like, though, is that little pencil right next to her username. 
you can use that. This is part of um, BTTV, which is Better Twitch TV. And that allows you to create a nickname for them. I love this because in certain communities, people prefer to go by their first name or by a nickname. Um, there's a few times that I've used this in communities with friends and just changed friends' names to random things that I thought was funny. Um, it's only native to you. And I will say uh, sometimes it doesn't save between your different computers. So the names that are saved on my Chrome for my PC aren't necessarily going to show up for me through BTTV on my Mac. Um, I don't know why it used to, but they're not syncing anymore. So just remember that this could be a thing. Um, my preference is I put in their nickname and then in parentheses, I put in their actual username. That way, if I still want to at them, I know exactly what their username is to do this. Because that replaces their entire name in chat. Mm -hmm. Like if you if you change it to Susan, then it just says Susan unless you put mm -hmm. their username in parentheses afterwards. An another really good use for this is to keep their user go to edit it, keep their username the same, and then in parentheses put their old username. If they've mm -hmm. switched usernames, a lot of people uh, got like messages after years that they had to change their Twitch names or if they just changed it for other reasons. Um, if mm -hmm. you keep on forgetting that someone used to be somebody else, that's a great place to put it, if not in the mod comments. I'd also put it mm -hmm. in the mod comments just so other people know. And like Rini said, this is native to you. Um, so yeah. not everybody's going to be able to see what your nickname is, but they will be able to see a comment if you put a mod comment in there and just say, this used to be SML 8290. Yeah. Yeah. And so it is kind of helpful for certain things, especially like you might have some of those users who kind of, not necessarily ban evaded, but they left under not so great reasons. Maybe they got into an online tiff with another person in chat or the streamer, and then they come back as a different username and the streamer doesn't know it. Um, so you might need to put that name in there for yourself and then decide whether or not, you know, does that person get a fresh start or should you tell the streamer so they can put it in as well? That's a whole nother topic. <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole nother episode, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So um, the other it. really great thing that I love about uh, BTTV in particular is setting highlight and blacklight keywords. So Next slide. What? Did it's it not go over? Oh, okay, it did. I'm okay. just slow. I'm on. Um, I'm on delay. <laughs> this um, is also from the the menu, just like the little gears cog icon by your chat. Yes, at the very bottom, uh, by where you choose emotes or click chat, this little uh, mm -hmm. mod icon, and then or the gear icon, and then you get into this is at the very bottom of the list. The better TT mm -hmm. uh, TV options. I I, did, I just I'm just gonna say T's better TT TV. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say for me. Um, so you can set font, set font font size. Those are cool things. If I you love go... setting my font size. I have my font size changed for all of it because, I mean, even with glasses, my eyes get really strained. Twitch font is really small. And so I have everything set to like 15, 16. And so that helps. If I'm doing something where I really need to focus on chat, like if I am streaming sometimes and I need to, to read chat better, I'll make it even bigger. I should have adjusted the font and I wouldn't have to be wearing my glasses right now, actually. Um, <laughs> uh, the Better TTV settings, you definitely want to go in there and play around. That's how you're going to get your uh, GIF emotes. That's how you're going to get... Um, oh my God, I feel like there's so many things in there. Oh, split chat is something that I find really nice. So basically what it does is one... Uh, one message is dark gray background. The next one's gray, dark gray, gray. And it like really helps separate the messages for me. Um, but there are- I need are... to start doing that. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> really nice. There's so many settings in BTTV that are in behind this better TTV settings that I would mm -hmm. suggest making sure that you just go in and actually look at all of them. Uh, because yeah. there are a lot of cool ones that you might be missing out, but those those really the, so much of those come down to personal preference. Yeah, like maybe you want to have the chat on the other side of the screen. Maybe you want to have it so the newest chat messages are on the top. 
these are things you can do in this. Like most people get BTTV because the, they emotes. want the emotes that come with it. <laughs> There's so much more you can do. Um, I mean, yeah, I use the highlight ones for this just to have my name because uh, since I don't go by adorable me on streams that often are in communities, I want to have every iteration possible of my username, of my actual name, so that way I don't miss a message from someone. Yep. Uh, in the highlight keywords, basically what that's going to do is it is going to make it so obvious every time one of those is used. If you have better Twitch t uh, TV, I believe the default is your name. Uh, so if somebody says your name, it highlights red. But what a lot of people don't like realize... The whole background is red. It's impossible to miss. It's fantastic. But what a lot of people don't realize is you can actually set whatever you want to that. So... Mm -hmm. It starts with Wes Sisa, but like Rini was saying, I immediately added Wes and I added mm -hmm. Sisa because I don't know what people are going to call me. And I also mm -hmm. added mod and mods and moderator and moderators because if someone comes in and they're looking for a moderator and they're like, is there a moderator here? That's going to like blow up on my screen and I'm going to be like, oh yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but going back to that kind of ugly dark subject I talked about earlier is having a huge highlight keyword list. Um, now, you do not want these to be blacklist keywords. We wanna make that very clear. You have to, highlight and blacklist are two very different things. And I'll talk about blacklist in a minute. Highlight keywords is where you're gonna to wanna to type up a list of all of those terrible, gross, trolly things that you never wanna see in chat. Um, some streamers already have a list of this for you and say like, Hey, these are the ones specific to me. Um, and go ahead and add this to your, to your highlight, uh, uh, keywords. Um, sometimes you might just want to go in there and make it yourself. Like I said, yeah, any and all slurs, slur workarounds, misspellings of slurs, like intentional misspellings, like, like Rainy said earlier, the worst stuff you can think of and in the mindset of if I was trying to get around auto mod, it's terrible, mm -hmm. but hear me out, save this list, keep it somewhere and save it so that you can always go back to it. One thing about better Twitch TV, sometimes the settings reset and you never want to have to sit down for another hour and a half and think of the worst words you possibly can. Nobody should put themselves through it twice. Keep a running list and add to it, save it somewhere safe. Um, and with that, I'll go to blacklist keywords. Blacklist just hides something from chat for you. It, it doesn't change chat. Everybody else sees the same thing. It just hides something from chat for you. Um, I've done this in a recent example. Someone was doing a giveaway on a stream with like 60,000 viewers. And I just, I was tired of seeing people enter the raffle. So I just entered the, the raffle thing like the, the exclamation point enter giveaway or whatever it was into the highlight key or into the blacklist keywords, sorry, big difference, into the blacklist keywords and all of a sudden I didn't see those anymore and it looked like a normal chat again. Um, but that's not going to help you moderate very much. But the, the main reason I bring it up is because the last thing you wanna do is switch the two. <laughs> and put put your highlight keywords into the blacklist because they are not the same. Blacklist just hides it for yeah. you. Um, but also, uh, I like I will blacklist uh, play in a channel that I mod that's playing marbles because now I can actually read chat again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. it's not actually like blacklisting people from saying it. So. Which, important distinction if you're a there. Streamer who is streaming marbles, maybe turn that on for yourself. That way you don't miss the things that are coming up and when people are actually trying to talk to you and you can actually have conversations. Like that's my biggest thing against marbles is some of the streams get too big and then the streamer's not actually interacting with their chat. And that bugs poop out of me. Like yeah. marbles is fun every once in a while and it's a huge thing. I get it. It's great. Everyone has personal opinions on it, but like, yeah, having that as a streamer is actually a really smart tool because, you know, 
you don't really need to see who hits play. I mean, their, yeah. their little ball is going to show up anyways. You need to see who's communicating with you. And you could miss a very important mod message, which if you don't have mod discord, you know, there could be well, something miss. I've also seen some things that were, it's just like not, Im- I mean, it is important, but it wasn't like, oh my God, you need to see this. It was just like sad because I would see someone come in and they'd be like, hey, you know, I haven't been around in a couple years. I moved and I got a new job, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm back and it's really great to see you. I see you've come so far. And it, then it's just mm-hmm. like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and you're just like, yeah. oh, that, that wholesome message mm-hmm. just got lost in the sea of plays. And yeah, so it's yeah. it's nice to turn off. I would definitely suggest it. Yeah. Um, Frank's faces. Yeah. Go ahead and so, take that one. FFZ, Frank your face Z, uh, it's actually an extension that I kind of slept on for a while. Because I'm like, I don't need this. I don't need more emotes. I've got my BTTV ones. Why do I need this upside down dog? Um, I will say finding the settings for it took forever. Essentially, if you are in theater mode you'll know you're never gonna see this um you have to actually have it. it's up at the very top of your twitch stream by your alerts and notifications i think that's where it's located but there is so like it's a huge robust tool it's huge like i only am showing you on this clip what some of the chat ones you can do um there's everything from um Oh, the appearance of what chat's going to look like, content, um, inputs, points, bits, and like you have actions to do so much stuff with this, like how it looks, how it behaves in your chat. The one I really want to point out is actually on the second slide. Um, and it is, I'm actually going to have to make this bigger so I can read this and see where it's located. Um, it's located in chat under behavior. There is, um, under scrolling, pause chat scrolling on hover. It's in this little drop down menu. And so, what happens, especially if you're going to use these uh, mod tools built in from chat, this causes chat to just stop. And it'll even say chat pause due uh, to mouse movement. And so, your chat just won't scroll up anymore. And so, this allows you to actually make chat stop. You can use the little tools you need. Once you mouse off of chat, it goes back to happening. Um, but this is a huge one. Big shout out to um, my former co-mod, Nissa. She yelled at us so many times for getting this because we misclicked. This tool is <laughs> so good. Um, but yeah, I actually want to spend more time in Franker Face. And most likely we will have a YouTube tutorial and an article on our website coming up in the next two months on Franker face and how to use it as a streamer and a mod. I'm, I'm honest. I'm just sitting here learning because I, I, I have it installed, but I don't use it. And it's also become one of those mm-hmm. things where it's like with BTTV and what Twitch is added and what's on Franker face. I'm just like, I don't know where mm-hmm. these things come from. I'm like, I know I have these abilities and sometimes I'm like, Oh, I forget if that's a BTTV thing or if it's a Franker, I don't know, whatever. Um, yeah, and I mean, it, it even has something where, like, if you hover over someone, you can time them out, which, be careful if you turn that one on. <laughs> that's um, interesting. There's some really unique things that this extension can do. Um, it's it's really robust, and I wish I knew more of it. Um, but this is one of the main ones that I really wanted to show everyone. Okay. And then, what are we looking at here? When you're in behavior, mm-hmm. you can open emote information cards oh okay yeah which i love because especially with um the bit emotes twitch doesn't have a great way of telling you what that value is with all these new bit emotes like you don't know what level it is and so if you see a um bit emote which i'll throw one in chat um this is a special bit emote it's only like, if you hover over it, it just says Taffy Bless, Twitch Bits Reward Channel McLaffy Taffy. If I click on it, a nice little thing that pops up almost exactly with the little username, it says what channel. It says you've already unlocked this emote by using a thousand bits in the channel and enjoy. And it says 1k bit reward right underneath the name. So I know exactly how much it is. 
It also gives you an option to report the emote. So if you do see bad emotes, you can report emotes. But I love this because I actually want to know what am I going to like. Th there's one that Taffy has, Taffy Cringe. I love that emote. And now I know it's 10k. So now I know to actually get to it. Yeah, it's a great tool. <laughs> Franker phase is one you shouldn't sleep that. on. <laughs> I didn't know about that. I knew you could now click on Twitch emotes and see like where they came from and what tier. Mm -hmm. I didn't know there was a way to see what bit reward it. Yeah. I mean, someone can test it to see if this is actually a native Twitch thing. Well, I don't think it is. I think no, it's just it the Franker face thing. Okay, good. It's just yeah. the Franker face thing. Get this. Turn it on. It's all in. Uh, if you go to the chat and then behavior, that's where it is. Everyone needs this. Um, I think we're probably going to have a, a, a second show after we all dive into Franker Phase more and just be like, okay, we're going to do a special just on Franker Phase and here's how you could use it. Or like yeah, I said, gonna... we do. Wes and I will probably do a video tutorial on YouTube to have just for Streamer Square. And it'll just be me watching like... Oh. <laughs> 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 Paul Reedy explains everything. Yeah, and if you have Wes's emote, you might as well throw Pogs up in the channel because don't, that's what he don't just you did. Dare. Uh, <laughs> my Pog face is very generic. Um, okay, so this next one is just a. This is going to take like thirty seconds to talk about this. Uh, this is the Twitch name change lookup. Um, mm -hmm. I honestly, it's by Commander Root. It looks like this. Just look for Twitch name change lookup. If you don't know about this. It is super helpful. Um, it's especially helpful for a channel like Locos, where we use it a lot because people uh, will change their username and then they don't need or they want their candy that they had previously accrued. Uh, but what a lot of people don't realize is that us mods have these tools. And even if they don't tell us that their name changes, you can look up a current name and it will tell you all of the previous usernames that... It, it, Unfortunately, it can't go as far to tell us like, oh, this email was used to make all these other usernames. So they could just make other email or other usernames. But if they did the Twitch name change feature, uh, you can look it up. A lot yeah. of people don't know that you can do that. And honestly, don't tell anybody but other mods because mm -hmm. we've caught so many people off guard. They think they're coming in and being sneaky. And we're like, hey, doesn't that person kind of remind you of uh, Jerk McWhat's-His-Face? And then we look up their username and you're like, oh, previous username, Jerk McWhat's-His-Face. <laughs> okay, enter a mod comment. <laughs> yeah. Bringing it and back to the mod comments. I was going to say, we've actually gone so far as to use this to find people's former usernames that didn't match the troll username that we actually knew. But we found other names that we then looked up on things like uh, Steam username changes. And that linked it back to the original account. And so, like, there are more than one username change um, things. Because, like, maybe they've used that troll name on their Xbox Live or PlayStation or Origin or some other thing. Like, you can look this stuff up. And that way you can actually tell, you know, like, who is this person? And, like, do we need to be careful? Because, you know... As much as trolls sometimes think they're being smart and sneaky, it's hard to change someone's speech patterns and habits and mannerisms. And so those things, like, you start recognizing them. Yeah. And you don't need to go all, uh, you know, uh, sleuth detective on every person <laughs> that, that comes in the chat, obviously. But there are some times when you really do feel like mm -hmm. you want to do a deep dive on someone and be like, okay, this, I think this person's been coming back for multiple years. They've been harassing. They've said maybe scary stuff mm -hmm. in the past. Like there are times when it actually does behoove you to take that extra step and see if you can find them on Steam, mm -hmm. on Xbox Live, even on Reddit, something like that. If you, you know, if you're really worried about something, which Unfortunately, sometimes we are really worried. Most of the time you're just getting, you know, mm -hmm. a, a crap face out of chat. But there are other times when you're like, no, actually, let's look a little bit further because this person freaks me out in another way or something like that. Not something we yeah. love talking about, but it, it does happen. Yeah. And it's one of those things like the one case that we actually used it and had um, 
some mods going into those deep dives, it's when the person's safety came on to play. And so yeah. we wanted to make sure um, this person in our community was safe and that there wasn't actually going to be a threat of harm. Um, turns out it was the user we thought it was. We were able to remove them very quickly. And since it was a team situation, we were able to share that all with our team and make sure there was a safe space for this person. Um, moving on to some Discord bots that can help with moderation. Rini, you are again yeah. schooling me on this one. <laughs> Tell me all about it. All right. So there are hundreds and hundreds of Discord bots. We're just going to touch on two today. And these are two that I personally have um, more experience with than others. Um, in fact, they're the only two Discord bots I have really experience with other than some like game ones. This first one is Carl GG. He's a cute little turtle. He's great. Um, he's got a nice little dashboard. Actually, both of these have good dashboards, which I like. Um, but you're able to actually log some of these moderation events. Um, so these are just some of the settings you can choose. I want to um, be able to log bans, mutes, warnings. These are ones that you can actually just do commands just like you do in Twitch chats and just be like exclamation point, ban, and then you can give a reason. And it saves that reason. And as you can see in ban setting here, do not DM offender. You can actually DM the offender and be like, you were banned or timed out or removed because of this reason. That way, like, they actually know what's going on. Um, on the streamer square one, uh, we use Carl and we use the next one as well. So both of these are ones that we use here on streamer square. And these are actually streamer square settings. Um, and so there's a lot you can do. These are also fun because of... I like using these because they have what are called vanity roles. And these are ones that are done just through reactions. And so what happens is you post something, or it, you go through the dashboard, you're able to post things, pick up the emotes people reply with. And essentially it then adds a role to that user's profile. I like using them, especially for pronouns. That way people can choose how they want to be identified. We use them in Streamer Square in our Discord to identify who are mods in Twitch, who are mods on Mixer, who are streamers on either platform. Um, artists. We use oh. artists, musicians, technical gurus. Um, in my own personal Discord, I have it so you can pick your Harry Potter house. Um, there's a lot of fun ways you can do this. And all the emotes are ones that are channel-specific emotes as far and the global emojis. So it's a fun way to like add new features. A lot of these bots also have games in them, so you can do different game stuff. Um, the... And I see it's, it's got auto mod too. That's not something I'm used mm -hmm. to seeing in Discord, which really yeah. helps with after hours. Yeah, the auto mod's nice because then you're able to, you know, yeah, mods aren't always able to be there all the time, especially in really thriving Discord channels. Um, the second screen just kind of shows a little bit that you can do with the logging. Two things that I really love as far as being a mod. I can see when a message is edited and I can see what the original was and what it was changed to. So this way, if there's ever any complaints of so-and-so said something, they're like, no, I didn't, but you can tell it was edited. Like, uh, you can see exactly, it wasn't just a typo. And then you can also see what was deleted. That's a big thing because people can just be like, poof, it's gone. I never said that, but you know, screenshots can only last. So you have to be really quick with those. We can actually see what those are. Um, there's other ones. Uh, the next screen is actually from a different bot. Um, it's yet another great. Yet another uh, generic. Ger oh, generic. I don't know. It's the the acronym is really weird, but it's a Discord bot. Um, and I like this one because I can do things like who is. Then you have to actually use the ID number for the tag, which can get kind of hard to find you have to have developer trolls turned on um but then i can see everything from like what their avatar is when the account was created um when they joined the server how long they've been in there what their last usernames are which both of these bots can trade can track username changes which they will track that they will track when their avatars change so this really helps especially if someone puts in a nickname or something like you can actually uh <laughs> you can actually tell who this person is. Like, there's some really cool things you can do with this. Um, these are ones that I definitely want to dive in deeper with because I've only just started using them myself. 
but I really do like them. Um, I also so, have them in our um, Streamer Square administrative server for our mod team if they want to pick who's going to be on our uh, highlights team. So that way, like, if you want to volunteer to be in a special role, we can actually do that without having to like go through and manually change things. Um, it helps out a lot. So I, I want to just take a step back to that Carl bot. All of yeah. those message messages that were showed there, you have Carl, lo just so everyone understand, like, and, and make sure I understand it correctly, you have Carl logging all of these actions in a separate channel that's yes. viewable just to you and the other mods. Yeah. So oh, in the dashboard, you get to pick where in your server you want uh, these logs to go. And so I've created special ones just for messages, just for users. So different types of uh, logging events can be uh, tracked there. And then if there's any sort of issue with anyone, we can kind of go back through there and see it. You could probably That's... also turn on um, some sort of highlight notification type thing. So like if there's someone coming back who is ban baiting, you could probably find a way to get it so it just auto mods and bans them again. Um, awesome. Yeah, there's That's ways awesome. you can I need do. To look into that for a couple of discords. Yeah, there's so many things you can do with with Carl and with um, the other one. Like, I've I've barely gotten into some of these things. Well, just um, just that log channel alone to track the edits and the deletes mm -hmm. is because half of the stuff that is problematic on Discord gets edited or deleted. Like I, mm -hmm. just that alone would would be such a huge tool in being able to to moderate. I I, yeah. I need to set one of those up. Yeah, and I do like the thing of like having it be able to actually send a message to the user saying like this is why this action was taken against you. Like if they got kicked from a server versus when they got banned. Um, you can set up things so like. Uh, if you have a type of server where you need someone to go through some sort of approval process, you can set all that up with these types of bots and mods. Um, man, there's just there's a lot that I've I've been playing with, and I will say the documentation for both of these mods or both of these bots are very great. They are super easy. The names that are on the um, slides that's the exact website that you go to to sign up. If you connect your Discord to it, it's so so easy. Um. So we, amazingly, we're like through, I think, half of the stuff that we wanted to get through. And we're coming up on on six o'clock here. We don't have a show coming directly after us this week. So we can definitely uh, still go through like maybe one or two more. Uh, but as we get towards the the tail end of the stream, if anybody has any questions, please start throwing them in chat. And then also because it looks like I mean, we didn't get to. We, we're not going to get to my absolute favorite mod tool, which is Chatty, which is an IRC chat client. Um, and I'm probably going to want to talk about just that for like mm -hmm. 20 minutes. Um, so if it's okay with Rini, we could probably do a part two of mod tools. Um, I mean, we've, we've definitely got plenty more to go over. Um, but we'll go ahead. We'll move on to the next one. Um, and if we get suggestions or advice from you in chat, uh, if there's something that you want to see us go over, if we do a part two or uh, anything like that, just let us know. Um, and we're going to go ahead and move on and uh, answer any questions that we see. Um, I think the next thing we were going to talk about was Nightbot. Um, yeah. So moving from Discord bots to channel bots, like... It's one of those things of like, we all know how channel bots can do things. Um, there's a lot of different spam protections, things that you can kind of get these auto mod things. Um, I just have them going so it's easy to do access cap or access caps, access emotes, links. You can have all this stuff set into your bot rather than having it run through Twitch. Um, I think one of the ones I like um, is one of the ones we just did today. You can do this for non-mod reasons. You can use this to troll your own chat. Uh, the example that we gave, um, my streamer McLaffy Taffy is doing a particular run of um, The Witcher Three. He's trying to be the worst character he can probably he can possibly be, and so as a joke, 
I set it up that Gwent is on the blacklist words because people were asking, are you going to play Gwent? He's like, no, this character doesn't care about it. And so this is what we did. Anytime anyone said Gwent, the bot was just like, "Uh, uh, uh, we have no time for your silly games. So there are ways of doing this. You have to be careful some because like if this person talked before that five seconds was back, it can ban their account. It, you know, you don't want to be too overzealous with the memes, bans, and stuff like that, because it can hurt people's accounts. But there are ways of playing with these things that, you know, add some new dynamics to chat and add new dynamics of engagement. Um, there's also settings in there, and sometimes you might have to edit these on the fly. I've had to do it once or twice, but for, like Rini said, excess caps, excess emotes, and excess uh, symbols. Symbols mm-hmm. is really the one that that I would generally have that turned up or turned on like all the time anyway. Um, that is the streamer's choice for the most part. But I, if you're seeing spam come through, maybe your streamer doesn't know that there is a simple way to turn <laughs> off that ASCII art. Yeah. 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 Um, Which I mean, every bot is different. So you do have to do it. But every bot that I've seen so far has that. Um, one of the other things that's great too is, you know, Sometimes you're doing certain things in your chat or in your stream that are just like, you're going to start repeating yourself over and over and over again. Timers are really cool. Um, I like the timer feature because you can have a timer pull up a command. That way you can pull up if you want to, or it can just go every 15 minutes as long as there's been five posts. And so that's been really nice, especially for like, we're doing charity events or, you know, the streamer has their cam turned off because they don't feel great today, but they still want them to be here. And so if they're going to get that question over and over again, you know, or like, hey, they're doing a sponsored thing. Here's the link to the sponsorship. Click this link. Yeah, um, a lot of I times, like that a lot. A lot of times that can even be built into like their contracts for sponsorships mm-hmm. um, where they have to mention it every so often. And sometimes by making it a bot command that automatically triggers so often, they're fulfilling that part of their contract. Um, so that can mm-hmm. actually be uh, very useful for that. Um, mm-hmm. There, I feel like there is something else on there. Maybe not, I can't read very good. Yeah, there are logs for this as well. Um, regulars, that's a really cool thing to have. Um, different bots have access to make someone a regular. So maybe if there's someone who's always in chat, they're someone you can trust because they know the community. You can make them... Um, sort of immune to some of the other rules. Like maybe they do have access to um, sending a bunch of emotes or they do have access to posting links. Or maybe you just say, hey, they're not going to be timed out for saying this blackout or this blacklist word, which this is the one where if you have blacklist words in bots, this is when it will actually like uh, time them out versus twitches. So this is a different way. Yes. So... These careful, blackout ones are different. The The blacklist on Nightbot means a different thing than the blacklist in Twitch tools. Uh, so very important mm-hmm. to, to note the difference there. Mm-hmm. Um, the There's a, there's a, a, a lot of uh, other tools that, honestly, and we've said this before, I think anytime you mod for a channel, find out what that bot is, find out how much access you can get, and spend some time looking at what's possible. Um, there have been countless times when I've found uses for a bot that someone been, had been using for years even that they had never thought of just because their focus is streaming and I spent, you know, an hour focusing on the bot and all of a sudden something that they'd had a problem with before, whether it was raffles or whether it was a uh, questioning system so people could submit questions, anything like that. Sometimes they didn't know that there was a solution already built into the bot that they use every day. Um, So Mm -hmm. as a general rule, definitely try and figure out as much as you can about the bots. Yeah, Um, and if you missed any of our last stuff on bots, we have an article about them. We have, I believe that episode, if it's not on YouTube, it should be. So um, you can find that past video. Um, I think we do have time. We could quickly at least introduce the last three tools. Um, Okay. Because they tie into each other pretty well. Um, the next one is the Google App Suite. Um, this is one that Wes and I know very well. We are teased for this. Um, on display is a screen or a 
Google Sheets that I made for my streamer Taffy, he was getting so many requests to just play the game. Like, you need to play this game. So we made it a thing where it's a uh, incentive, so to say. Like, after he gets so many bits, um, or bits as far as, like, if you donate a sub, that turns into 500 bits then, because that would be $5 that you spent. Um, so any amount of money that you spend on him essentially gets turned into points that you can then vote for what game happens. And we have this tracking uh, kind of, it used to be every single bit that, or every single amount of money that got sent to him, the mods would ask, do you want this to be put onto the spreadsheet? That got to be kind of overzealous uh, of us. Um, so now it's more of a, if you want it to, this to happen, you can do this. Well, But unless it's a significant amount of bits, we're not going to bug you about it. Um, we do have other screens, like ones that are under a thousand bits, get put onto a different one. They're not on our main screen. We have one for Halloween because people already want to buy scary games for Taffy to play. Uh, we had a hype train one. That was ambitious. Do not track all of the activity from a hype train. And if you do, you need to be an editor so you can see all of the activity happening and actually catch everything. Um, and if that happens, if you actually do want to do that, have one person tracking the activity from um, the dashboard and having them put it into the spreadsheet. Have other people go through and say, this is what it's being linked to, like contacting those people. And then once that has actually been claimed by a game or whatever you're putting it towards, cross the whole line out. That way you know it's done. Find some way to mark that. Um, and so, but if you have so many Google Docs and apps and whatever, um, the next tool is one that some people hate. There is, um, but it's a great way of saving all of your uh, applications in one place under titles, and that's Trello. I love Trello. I love making pretty Trellos. Um, this is just a great little way of kind of having like bulletin boards, and they're all just saved in. Um, each of those things, you can click on them, and um, it could go into more depth. The next slide kind of has that, but like you can actually build out each of your bulletin boards to actually have things that you need to remember. Um, and so... That's sort of most of that. Um... I love Trello because it, it the way it lets you like design a workflow and mm -hmm. lets people like take ownership of different items is just absolutely amazing to me. Um, and just on the I going back real quick, I was just like completely entranced listening to you because you're one hundred percent right about all of that uh, Google Sheets stuff, and you guys do such a great job with it over there. Um, but just to be creative with what you might be able to do with Google Sheets. Um, we've done it for charity tracking. We've done it for donations, giveaways, um, all kinds of things. And always just be on the lookout on how you might be able to... Because the, the Google Docs, that's not really a you helping the streamer as much most of the time as it is you helping the other mods. Because otherwise, someone is sitting down and manually tracking everything. And Google Sheets and Google Docs can be edited by multiple people at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it can really split the workload. So a lot of times, I'm not making a Google Sheet to do something for my streamer. I'm making a Google Sheet to make the lives of all of my fellow mods easier. Yeah. And these things, too, like um, the one that I made for Taffy, the play the game, because it is such a community-based thing it is a public one um however only the mods can access it so what you do when you share it you make it for view only and then anyone who's viewing it can request access to edit it and then that goes through when it links to your google account of course your gmail um so you have to be comfortable with that and the same thing with trello it links through an email so you have to be comfortable creating an account and having a name on there that you actually want people to see um Go for it. <laughs> Sorry. This is just like, this is like uh, Loco and Stream Doctor telling people to make uh, sure that their their business email is on their Twitter bio. Um, always make a Google account for your Twitch name. Make a Gmail account for your Twitch name. Use, a, use whatever name you want so that it's not 
your uh, real name uh, because sometimes if you are working on a document that is being shown, like the one that uh, Rini showed is actually something that chat can access as well so yes. they can see their progress. Now, if you're on there adding bits up there and you're using your regular Gmail account, your full name is displayed at the top. Um, it is, in my opinion, and for multiple other reasons, as soon as you get into modding for someone, if you don't already, make, you know, a westcisa at gmail.com or westcisa twitch at gmail.com and just keep all of your mod stuff together that way while also protecting your identity. Yeah, or, you know... <laughs> bestmodwes at gmail.com like you can make that's my specific. private one <laughs> <laughs> um, i will say to you that like i'm someone who's very particular about my identity online so my gmail actually has my online identity that is the same uh last initials that i use for a last name on twitter and whatnot because i just want to make it safe like i don't want anyone to have access to my last name unless I give it to them. The only exception has been Facebook because Facebook won't let you have two consonant initials as your last name, but, and there are other ways people can find my actual last name if they really, really try hard enough, but I'm going to try to take at least one step to, you know, protect myself. There are also people who just, you know, they're okay having their full name out there. Yeah. That some happens. people are just and, fine with it. Yeah. And so, you know, just, Make sure, you know, if, if you're setting this up for your team and you see that someone's full name is on there, just be like, hey, are you cool with this? Because this could go public. Right. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, and you can see in this one, like, if we decided to do the clips highlights, I can add to-do lists. There's different color labels. You could actually have um, a header image on here, which one thing I really love for Trello, if you're going to be linking your um, mod meetings or your meeting notes from anything create a header that says current in bright red. And then each time you have a new meeting, delete that one from the old one and re-upload it to your new one. That way it's constantly moving because the Trello list can get really long, especially if you don't archive things. And so um, I really like changing up those kind of headers. And like, as I had on the main one, like I create headers for the top card that's always going to be there. That way I, I know what's going to happen underneath. And that's sort of like the introductory card for the entire um, section of the board. That whole topic, whatever it is. Yeah. 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 Uh, the last tool, we're not going to get into too deep. This, however, does give you a sneak peek into the life of Wes and I as far as being um, Streamer Square host. So this is what we use to actually plan out our shows. Um, ClickUp is a really robust tool. It's one that... Um, to get the most out of it, you do need a paid account, which, you know, is unfortunate, which I will say Trello is free. Tre Trello is free, free, free. Um, you can do so much with it. Um, there are little like Butler extensions you can add into it. But ClickUp is a really robust one for that you can add as many of these um, special labels that you want to have. You can see how things are being done, who's in charge of what. Um, if we go into the next screen... This is essentially that same whole, like, if you click onto the task, if you click onto the topic, this is what it looks like. You have a space to see a main description or notes. You can track the progress. You can see all the activity, um, where those overlays are and everything. You can, we could have had a conversation in there. Um, and the thing I like about this over Trello, this individual card is linkable. You can take the URL to this specific card from your browser and then send it to someone. And if they're in that team with you, they can open it and go straight to that part. I use this so many times when I'm making meeting notes. I link specifically to the or to the ClickUp card. And it helps That's smart. a lot. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um all right. Well, uh, I think the the only other thing that I wanted to talk about was was chatty, but I forgot to send you any screenshots for that. <laughs> um, so since the uh, slides became our outline, that was my bad. <laughs> um, but uh, just I go guess... to the last one, and we can talk about what's missing. Chatty. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. What do we want? What is missing? What could be fixed? Um, no, Chatty is a, a fantastic tool. Um, if anyone has ever done IRC chat clients, they'll be familiar with what it looks like, what it can do. Uh, but basically, imagine it as a separate chat that you can pop out in a box that you resize to whatever you want. It can have tabs that are just the chat. Um, actually, let me see if I can uh, do this on the fly real quick. Just pull it up. Um, yeah. I will say I tried chatty. My biggest discrepancy with it was I'm a very visual person and I didn't like the default font. You can change the font. It does not have the one for um, <laughs> for Twitch, but you can look up what the Twitch chat font is. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but you can do that. You can download it for free. That's basically what I did, and I made Chatty look just like Twitch chat because that's what I wanted to see anyways. Yeah. Yeah, you can do uh, that. I personally, one of my favorite things is you can like go into the settings and I can make it so that all moderators show up as a certain color of purple, their name. Ooh, so it can like, like just that. overwrite everybody's and I can just make it so subs show up one color, followers another color, and then a mods another color. And it can be it, it can be so useful because you can immediately mm -hmm. just be like, oh, their name is red. That means they're not even following yet eyes on them real quick um mm -hmm. it also allows you to log every um every chat you just basically have to tell it where to save the logs and it will save them for you it's amazing it will also yeah. tell you auto auto moderation actions so something that carly was talking about earlier you can actually say or have a look at it and see what automator uh, auto moderator has done um, so that's something that's like completely unique. Um, I haven't seen that anywhere except chatty, but I also, I, I love chatty, um, and I use it a lot. So, um, but yeah, I would look into chatty and the way that I kind of look at it is I'm not a chatty expert by any means. This is like the first time I've used like an IRC chat client. Uh, I'm not very good at it, but honestly, you can just go in there and play around for like 10 minutes and it's very easy to see like, oh yeah, I want my background color to be this. I want my font to be this color and this size. And then I want to make moderators appear this color. Like it's very yeah. easy to just look through the settings and get yourself to a place where you, uh, where you actually like the way that it looks and you can get a lot more functionality out of it. Yeah. yeah, you I'm can curious, do auto mod stuff through through um, Ed or anyone else in chat. If you know um, West Two, if you're in Chatty, if you're in one of these IRC clients, do you earn channel points while you're in there? Because I think Twitch has it where like you're supposed. To, I know you can earn channel points if you're in certain uh, multi Twitch things, which I pull up multi Twitch a lot of times because, um, if, especially if I'm doing work while modding while also being in a friend's stream because hey we've all done it sometimes we're not active like active active in our mod chats we're just listening and reading and if you have those highlighted terms that you're looking out for those are going to pop up red and it's going to be really nice um like i know some of those get in there um and you can still earn channel points from that but then again like what are mods using channel points for other yeah, than to meme and troll <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you do get channel points for it, but also because it doesn't have any video. Yeah. yeah. Um, typically what I'll do is if I want to watch it, uh, I'll just drag Chatty and make it the size that covers the Twitch mm -hmm. chat and just say I'd rather have the exact same thing but with more functionality and just cover the bar on the side. <laughs> um, it does have a, that really nice feature um, where you can mm -hmm. just click a button and it always stays on top. So even if you click oh, nice. outside there, it stays above the above the video um so you could always do it that way um mm -hmm. because either way if you're if you're just using chatty i guess you, you can't watch the stream but i know how it goes a lot of times as a mod it's 10 times as important to be watching the chat than mm -hmm. it is to be watching the actual yeah. stream oh and i will say throwing it way back to Frankerface for those of you who have vertical monitors and want to do twitch there uh you can actually have a portrait mode chat. So the stream is on top and the chat is below it. 
See, that's what I do. I just go full screen on my ver- on my portrait monitor, and then I just make chatty the bottom third. <laughs> but yeah, like well, it's, this, this it will make it so you're not you. covering up the stream, and you can actually have it so that, you know, chat is going to be blue. Because that's something I actually like in certain multi-Twitch things. I like having the chat underneath instead of beside, because it repositions the screen so I can actually see more of the stream. Or I can see it in a, a, a larger resolution. Especially on a portrait monitor. If once you've got the the chat on the side on my portrait monitor, like my stream, stream like ends big. up being like yeah, it's like <laughs> it'll be a stream. Um and yeah, I yeah. can't actually see anything anyway. So um, yeah. All right, awesome. Well, I think that uh kind of wraps us up and, and leaves us yeah. at a good if spot has for today. Questions, throw them in now. Um again, throw them in our Discord because we have a very robust I use the word robust a lot, and I blame Taffy on that. You got a robust vocabulary. Robust. Um, we we do have a very uh, yeah. I'm gonna keep with it. Robust Discord, it. and our Discord has a lot of different users who have good knowledge on different sources, and so you know, uh, just yeah we're gonna embrace the robust we have a diverse there's a lot of knowledge we have a lot of people who are just great uh resources that you can tap into and so if you have questions about any of this reach out to us there um if you want to talk about tools that we didn't cover that you think maybe we should know about if you find a new tool share it with us like treat our discord especially the um uh, behind the streams discord and um streamer square treat that as like everyone's mod chat like this is where all the mods get to go to learn the secrets yeah, yeah. we we use the tools we use we certainly don't use all of them and we certainly don't use all of them to their full potential so no. definitely let us know if we miss something definitely let us know if something helped you or definitely let us know if uh, we could be using something even more or even better than we already do um, I'm, can we, can we talk about next week's episode yet? Um, yes. like, I know you mentioned it earlier. I'm so excited. Tell us about it. Okay. So next week, uh, we are going to be discussing the really amazing topic of mod appreciation, things that streamers can do to say, Hey, I like you like talking about some of the, some of the hard things and on our show, it's going to be none other than the one and only Deem Hera, who was here in chat with his streamer, Frank the Pegasus. It's going to be so good. I'm so excited. Yep. Um, I am excited too. And I got to say too, just a shout out for Deem. Deem is not only a terrific mod who's been around Twitch, I don't know for how long, because I found Deem in another community and all of a sudden he's everywhere. Um, He's he's also a really, he's a really great artist. He is a really great streamer. Um, Y'all should just follow Deem as well. Um, but we're so excited to have Deem and Frank with us next week to talk about mod appreciation because that's a big thing. Like Mods are the unsung heroes of Twitch. We are the backbone. We're the ones carrying the communities. I mean, I, it sounds like I'm bragging and being all like, look at us, look at us. But like we do a lot. That's why we put on this show, just for mods. And so we are so, so excited to be able to show some more love for for Deem, for Frank, for all of their mods, for all of the mods everywhere. Like, this is going to be a great celebration. It's going to be awesome. And Frank does such a good job of it. And yes. she's just such the the perfect person to have on the show for it. I'm I'm super excited. Um, <laughs> and is there is there anything else we need to plug? Last week we talked about, or two weeks ago, we talked mm-hmm. about uh, bots. If you haven't seen the VOD, that should be mm-hmm. up. Um, it was emotes, then bots. Because we had Misha. Yeah. On our last Oh my god, show. yeah, no, it's bots and then emotes. So emotes is the most yeah. recent. Um, I know. I know what we have a do. lot of really great things coming up. We're going to be talking about diverse communities and working with that, dealing with harassment. We're actually going to get into some of these like hard topics and how do you deal with them, especially like inner team communications. We're going to talk about graphics and overlays, and our friend Misha is going to try to be back for that. Um, yeah, we're going to get. We're deep. working with some things. Uh, we got some things kind of built in with some some brands, maybe. Keep your fingers crossed. Um, we're going to get into mental health. That's a huge subject. So this season is just Men- starting. 
This is episode four. We have so much in store for you guys. And if you love this show, make sure to scream it out on Twitter. Make sure our bosses know. um, Because we love doing this for all of you. Yes, this is a blast Mm -hmm. every week. And uh, as always, I've gotten DMs from some people. Feel free to drop it in uh, the Streamer Square Discord. Feel free to tweet it at Streamer Square. If you have things that you want to see covered on this show, then we want to hear about it. Um, so definitely let us know. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to plug all the things in uh, in the chat here because we've got Discord. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a YouTube. Like I said, there is a Twitter. Um Make sure you find us in all of those things there. And then when's uh, when's going to be our next show on Streamer Square? That's going to be on Monday, right? Um, Yeah, I don't know. If... Not Follow our show. To... Our show, but yeah. Because um, <laughs> Lucid is just getting back from Paxi's stuff, correct? Right, and with the right. Super Tuesday stuff, he's kind of got a lot going on. So uh, listen to Twitter. We'll let you know whether or not Hotfix is happening tomorrow. As of right now... I'm not sure, um, but next week we should have stream scene. We should have your brand. Your business is going to be back. We'll be back. Dan's stream of thought is going to be back again, uh, likely with a guest. And of course, Lucid will be back. So all five shows next week, starting Monday. Okay. Um, Thank you. <laughs> um, and as, sorry, I'm just said, making if you have, goofy faces. <laughs> if you have ideas of like things you want to see on Streamer Square in general, um, uh, this will be kind of our outro. Uh, Rini, I work for Streamer Square, so if you have suggestions of things you want to see anywhere on Streamer Square, our YouTube, our Twitter, our... Uh, I almost said Facebook. We don't have a Facebook. Um, our, if you if you have ideas for a show or for a show topic, just, you know, um, shoot us a message somewhere. I'm Rini, Adorkable Me. You can find me... Uh, here when we're streaming if not you can find me in the mornings with mclaffy taffy where i'm a mod there otherwise you know i'm kind of just enjoying the relaxed life of being a streamer square employee uh, <laughs> and cat mom and cat mom oh um, tuya says hi <laughs> hi tuya well i oh my god i'm gonna be staring at your cat this whole time okay so <laughs> uh i'm wes wes sisa uh you can find me on twitter you can find me on twitch but i don't really stream uh in the morning you can find me modding for lucid fox and then i'm switching over to modding for loco in the midday and then i mod for streamer square in the evenings um so find me any of those places uh and definitely check out main thing our discord get in there it's not just for streamers it's for mods now too um we can overtake that that place Yes, yes, there are more of us than there are of them. <laughs> That's actually right. true for Twitch. <laughs> it is true. It is true. Uh, all right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, have a great day, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.